When we investigated the origins of these high-class roses, the trail led us to a Dutch company that purchases them in Kenya. The roses are taken out of their cardboard protective packaging, subjected to quality checking, snipped to the right length, repackaged, and loaded onto trolleys. After a second check, they're labeled and have auction documents attached to them. The trolleys are driven into the lorries, which depart for the auction. In Alsmeer, near Amsterdam, they're put on sale at the world's largest flower auction. In one of the auction halls, we again encounter the deep red, first red variety. It turns out that these striking, high-quality roses come from the Kenyan Redlands Roses Nursery. Redlands Roses belongs to the Sokfinal group and is based in Ruiru about 40 kilometers northwest of the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Here, 12 hectares of roses are cultivated in the shade in greenhouses. Redlands Roses grows hybrid tea roses grafted onto the indica rooting stock. The flower heads are four to six centimeters in size, and the rose itself averages about 60 centimeters in length. To avoid the problem of high purchase prices on new plants, Redlands Roses has bred its own cultures in a 600 square meter glass house since May 2000. When the parent plant is fully grown, its shoots are cut off and stripped of their leaves. The stalks are then cut up, and using a slanting cut, the woodstock and the budstock are together prepared for grafting. graft is pressed together by means of a clothes peg. The graft is then planted out. Any factor likely to retard the growth of the new plant is carefully dealt with. The new plant then begins to grow. You can clearly see how the bud and the length of stem have grown into one another neatly. The graft has been successful. After five to eight weeks, the new shoots are ready to be planted out. The new shoots are planted out and fed in troughs that are connected to one another by a drainage system. The water comes from the nearby Beaumont Dam. The troughs are filled with graded maram, a volcanic soil. The water is filtered and goes to a central well from which it is pumped into the drainage system in the greenhouses. First, however, UV lamps kill the bacteria in the piped water and the fertilizer blend is introduced into a large tank to be mixed in turn with the sterilized water so that the water and the nutrients that the plants receive are of impeccable quality. 70% of the fertilizers within this hydroculture system are recycled. After two months, the sprigs on the young plants are subjected to selective bending, ensuring the plant more light. The roses are thinned out, that is to say the superfluous leaves under the flower head are removed. The roots undergo rootification and the flower heads on the sprigs are painted blue to protect them against fungus. Selective pruning is another important part of the process, and scouts work daily in the greenhouses, checking for diseases. Four months after the young grafts have been planted, harvesting is possible three times a day, every 50 days. The flowers are packaged head above head in a net with tape around them. They are then immediately dipped into purified cold water and within 15 minutes of plucking are conveyed to the pre-cooling room where the temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. Before the flowers are packaged by the workers in the great hall, they're sorted by length. Their leaves are removed to 10 centimeters from the end of the stem. They're measured and then laid head above head in batches of 20 to prevent damage to the cups. Quality selection follows. Five grades are distinguished from perfect to reject. The roses are then bundled and labeled. The label contains the date, a code indicating the nature of the bundle, the variety, the name, the length, and the quality. Cardboard is packed around the flowers and the stems are held together.
The scanning process is intended to check that the bouquet satisfies the quality criteria. The flowers are now conveyed in water to the pre-cooling room, where the temperature is 4 to 6 degrees Celsius. They're dried out there for two hours. Before boxing, they're again scanned. After this, the flowers, heavily protected and carefully packaged, are ready for transport. The cardboard boxes are now rapidly loaded from the pre-cooling room into refrigerated lorries and checked by means of the order form to ensure that the numbers are correct. The lorries then leave Redlands Roses bound for the airport. Redlands Roses is scrupulous in its environmental behavior. Clipped shoots are composted, thanks in part to the consistent use of highly advanced technologies and the respect and care for the environment that characterize the company's operations. Redlands Roses is the first non-Dutch nursery to receive the coveted MPS Environmental and Human Social Rights Protection label. As the roses arrive at the airport in the Kenyan capital Nairobi for transshipment, they're continually given optimal care. To ensure stable transport during the intercontinental flight, nets are hung over the boxes. The next morning, people all over Europe are able to enjoy their extraordinary beauty and quality. All doubts are now dispelled, because top quality now has a name. Right!